Well, a big weekend for football, of course, uh, not just one match, two matches. I'm not sure how much global interest there'll be in the match for third and fourth place, but um, I'm sure for the likes of Morocco anyway, uh, finishing third at the Football World Cup probably is a lot better than finishing fourth. So I'm sure there'll be a big, big support factor rolling over into that match for the um, story of these games, of course, or this championship, um, Morocco. But all eyes will be on that match starting 4 o'clock New Zealand time on Monday morning uh, between uh, Argentina and France. With me now, football commentator and a regular here on the platform talking football, Dennis Katsanos. Dennis, very good afternoon to you. Have we, or have you got the two finalists that you wanted? I, um, I'm in a little bit of a picking comp round work and I did really well. The only one I didn't pick was Morocco. That was, I got, um, got all the semi right um, and then I, I sort of sat there and my heart was telling me Morocco and then Portugal beat Switzerland 6-1 I mean oh no nah, no nah, Portugal's on fire there's no there's no way so I was three out of four uh, and then um, I went um, I'm, I've, I've married into the Croatian um, you know Croatian community here in Auckland so I couldn't pick uh, couldn't pick Argentina Croatia I, I had to pick Croatia in that match um, and that went dismally bad so uh, so the only pick I've got left is France believe it or not well France and yeah uh, in Argentina, so um, so so I'm not doing too bad, Brendan. But yeah, it should be um, it should be an epic match. Uh, the way I'm, the way I sort of size it up, Argentina spluttered and, and and not really got going, and then they were pretty good in that semi final. Well, they were excellent in that semi final, to be fair. Um, whereas France have just looked like the France I watched in 2018, where they were untouchable. And um, I know you know I don't know how into football you are, but Mbappe was just the, particularly that second goal that. Uh, that the French score where he did a little twist and a turn and a, yeah, he just yeah, ran inside. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I, I just, you know, that, that was, um, everybody sort of holds Messi and Ronaldo up on a pedestal, but uh, that was next level, you know, and to be able to do that and have that speed of thought and anticipate um, that where, where players are going to go, it's almost like you're watching The Matrix, you know, and oh, Neo's there, you know, dodging all the bullets. He's, he's got that sort of <laughs> yes. sixth sense about yeah, him. It's, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah, it's true. well, I mean, it's, I suppose, one of the really good things about this final is that the two best players uh, at the World Cup this year, I think most would agree, have been Messi and Mbappe. And I guess the mm. one who will win the player of the tournament might be the one whose side wins, or if they, I suppose, if you're in the losing side but you have an exceptional game, uh, you might win that title. So it's a, a great interest factor in the match as well these two fine players and Messi yes he's not as quick as he used to be is he those legs have slowed down a bit as usually happens when you get into your mid-30s but I think he makes up for it doesn't he with with his British brain (laughs) the brain and his reading of the game and uh, his ability to sense what's about to happen yeah no Messi's he's still absolutely phenomenal and still pulling all the strings Um, I haven't I haven't been completely sold I mentioned this before I haven't been completely sold on Argentina and the way they play, and uh, in particular, sort of how they went through pool play, but they just seem, you know, like like the Italians who always have a horrible start at the World Cup. They seem to just be coming right at the at the uh, at the right end. Look, for Messi, I'd be happy. It's his fifth World Cup. He'd love to, you know, do the dream, uh, the dream thing, and send Argentina off with a third World Cup win, and, and you know, sign off uh, as a World Cup winner and follow in the footsteps of Maradona. Uh, for the French, going back to back, I think it's only happened a couple of times. I think the Italians did it many, many years ago in the 30s, 30 and 34, and uh, it was Brazil, I think, 58 and 62, but but don't quote me on that, Brendan. So, you know, to have France go back-to-back uh, in, in, this, uh, in this new millennia would be would be something special as well, and uh, Mbappe and Giroud and the way the French are playing. And you saw the unity in the team, and that's one thing that I've always noticed about whether it's the French rugby side, whether it's the French football side, whatever French side it is, if they're united, uh, it's like that French revolution. They're, they're just switched on. Uh, really hard to beat. If they've got the, um, and I'm not trying to stereotype, but if they've got the in-house French fighting and I don't like you and you don't like me and you can see that that sort of bickering amongst them, um, then, yeah, I would say they're not going to be that formidable. But this team, the way they were celebrating with the crowd at the end and hugs with the coaches, um, they're, they're dialled in. And I, I just, um, I'm leaning, I'm leaning France by one, but I think it'll probably go extra time. Yes, well, who would know in this World Cup in particular? Yes, I remember a couple of days ago mm. asking um, Sam Malcolmson prior to the quarterfinals. Uh, he's a very perceptive guy, always kind of like where he goes with his ideas, and he's usually spot on mm. the money. I said, "Give me the four quarterfinal winners," and he got one out of four. Mm. So um, yeah. you're not a, you're oh, not you're not okay, alone well, in missing out on a few. But I'm happy. I did, yeah, I did three out of four. I'm quite happy with that. Like I said, my gut was telling me Morocco. And I'd back them actually after the initial pool match between Croatia, um, 
Marty actually asked me about uh, who's your dark horse, like complete bolter out of nowhere. Oh, sorry, it sounds like I'm, I'm you know, um, yeah, I'm give, giving myself a boost. But, um, but yeah, I was really, really stoked that they um, they did that well. But there was just something about the way they play, the high press, their fitness, um, the intensity that they play. So they've really um, done a lot for, you know, um, Arab nations and, of course, uh, African nations. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's... Um, it's fantastic. But inevitably, it always comes down, doesn't it? South America versus Europe in the final, which is what we've got. And, um, okay, mm-hmm. I, I, I would have loved to have seen Brazil there. I think they uh, elevate football to an even higher level, and uh, F- France and um, Argentina are able to. There's just a sort of an artistic element about what they do with the ball. But anyway, art doesn't necessarily win you everything in this world, and that's proved to be the case for them so I presume if you're a Brazilian would you be backing Argentina this weekend? I Look a lot of my Brazilian friends would support you know they're out of it they'd support Argentina and want to see South American football dominating over European football it's um yeah there is that massive rivalry if it's the two of them forget it <laughs> I've seen punch ups in the stands before at um you know, at Olympic level whether it's um yeah, Argentina, Brazil, or um, Brazil, Uruguay. So you're just sitting there going, "Oh my God, these guys are fanatical." And you're sort of just cowering away, going, "Okay, I don't want to get pulled into this." But um, but I, I like I've got half a dozen Brazilian friends that would yeah um, have quite openly supported Argentina and would be happy for them to, to pick up the trophy and, and you know and they'll um, basically hail them as uh, you know a South American uh, South American pride and yeah that um, that. that uh, continent in the world is, is still the best in terms of football for the next four years anyway I was going to say do you care about what happens in the match between third and fourth place but given your <laughs> Croatian connections yeah, I, I imagine do. you do yeah, I do yeah yeah like we were supposed to be uh, down at the uh, Croatian club but the local local Croatian club had the had the game on here in Auckland and um, and uh, just had, a, had some other commitments so I couldn't make it but um, no in terms of the emotional investment and um, yeah, it was a very very quiet day in our house when they lost that semi final. Uh, it was a bit bit grim, and uh, you know my father in law wasn't too pleased uh, when I rang him on the phone, and um, you know that wasn't a penalty, and this and this and this, and <laughs> bloody yeah. Argentina that, and um, so yeah yeah you know but but one eye uh, in, in our household, but um, yeah that third and fourth look, I, I think for Croatia, um, you know uh, putting all the the emotion and you know the, the being married into it for a country of three point nine million. Um, to have come out of Yugoslavia and made four World Cups and made the final and the semi-final. Uh, we talk about nations punching above their weight and small little nations, um, you know, doing really, really well, and I'd, I'd have to put them up there. And, and I would have liked um, Luka Modric, you know, if there were some players that I'd like, you know, to, to have some um, plaudits and, and do really well and, and maybe go all the way and, and be crowned World Cup winners, it would be Messi, Modric and Ronaldo there. They're the three of this generation that have, have made a, you know, a real, real mark on the game. So... A little bit sad for him. That's that's him done. Um, but um, I'd like I'd like to think that Croatia will go out and send them off. They they just don't have that um, Manzukic or that firepower up front. So in in Morocco they'll want to keep the momentum going. I think they'll come and fire it up. So that one I I really can't pick it. Honestly, Brendan, I'm so stuck. Uh, the first game the the pool play was a draw, and it was um you know it was a hard fought draw as well. Yeah, it's a match. I suppose no one really wants to play, and I guess uh, I suppose they have to go to extra time, mm. do they? If, uh, even if, even for a third and fourth match, they've got to give a bronze medal and a, to someone. So yeah, we could have two penalty shootouts over the weekend, but we'll see how we yes. go. Anyway, yeah, don't believe, believe that. yeah. Anyway, Dennis, I thank you very much indeed for your time. Enjoy your weekend's football. I'm sure you will, and um, uh, we'll catch up again. I'm sure. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it very much. Yeah, thanks very much, Brendan. Yeah, all the best and a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to you.